Alright, so in this video, we'll be demonstrating how to create a basic alarm in FinStack using the Logic Builder application. In this example, we'll be creating a very simple alarm that will run on our VAVs and trigger when the temperature is too hot. Since everything in 4.0 is context sensitive, the first thing you'll need to do is navigate down to one of the equipment you'd like to run the program on. You can see here that this VAV is at a very high temperature and does not have any alarm being thrown. So to start creating the program, you'll need to click on the menu button, then open up the Logic Builder slide out and select the new option. This will bring up a wizard that will allow you to name your program and also select which equipment it's going to run on and what points you'd like to bring in. Now the best part about this is that we are about to create one program that's going to run on multiple equipment. The way it determines what to run the program on is through a tag filter called Program On. By using FinStack's context sensitive capabilities, FinStack automatically filled out the wizard with the current equipment's tags. So as of right now, this program is going to run on anything that has the equip, hot water reheat, HVAC, and VAV tags not just the VAV we're looking at. Okay? Once you're done, hit OK, and that will create the new program, and it will also automatically switch the Smart Menu view to show the properties of the program you just created. Click on the Edit button to begin setting up your alarm logic. Alright, so the first thing we're going to want to do is click on the empty slot inside of the Routine Start block, and then click anywhere in the workspace. This will bring up a search menu that allows you to quickly find the block you're looking for by typing in keywords. The first block we'll need here is the if block. So go ahead and type that into the search, then select the if block and hit OK when you're ready. This will automatically create the if block and create the link between the two. So now we want to create a condition for the if block. So to do this, we'll start off by grabbing the room temp point from the far left list of available variables and dragging it into an empty space within the work area. This will create a block to represent the room temperature value. Now we're going to want to bring in a greater than block to set up a value range that will trigger the alarm. To do this, click on the empty circle inside of the room temp block and click anywhere in the workspace to bring up the search menu. In here you can start typing in the words greater than and below you will see symbols representing that block. Once you've got that selected, hit OK and the block will appear automatically linked up to the room temp block. So now we just have to type in a value into slot B, which in this case is going to be the value of 80. The next block we'll be bringing in is the delay block. This block will allow the user to type in a set amount of time that will need to pass before this condition is met. So I'm going to click on the greater than blocks result bubble and create a link to a delay block. As soon as the delay block was added, you can see that by default it was linked to the delay property of the block, which in this scenario is not what I need. So to delete a link, all you have to do is right click on the property and a tooltip will come up asking which link you would like to delete. Go ahead and delete the delay link and relink it to the correct slot which in this case is the value. Once that's done, go ahead and type in a delay time, uh, which in this case, I'm just gonna do five seconds for the sake of this video. Okay, so now that I've got my condition ready, I'll take the result of my delay and link it to the condition of the if block. Now that we have that ready, the next thing we'll need to do is create a then statement. The then statement will trigger if that condition is met. So in this case, if the condition is met, I want to set my alarm to be on. So to do this, I'm going to click on the then icon and then click into the work area. And this time, instead of searching for an existing block, we will need to create a Boolean variable to trigger my alarm. To do that, simply select the add variable option and hit OK to begin creating your variable. In this section here, or in this menu here, you can name the variable and choose what type of variable this will be. Make sure to make it a Boolean point as we will need it to turn on and off to trigger the alarm. Next, it will ask you what you'd like the default value to be, and in this case, I'm going to select false. Once you're done, hit OK, and it will automatically create a set block with your new variable. 
The checkbox at the very bottom of the set block determines whether you're setting the point to be true or false. So for this one, I will check the checkbox um, so that if our condition is met, the point will turn on. The last thing we'll need on the main routine is an else statement. So if the condition is not met, we want our alarm trigger to remain off. So to do this, we're just going to repeat the same process as the then statement, only now we're just going to select the existing variable and then leave the checkbox unchecked. Okay, so if we were to read this from start to finish, it would read, if the room temp of this equipment is greater than or equal to 80 for more than 5 seconds, then set the overheated zone alarm point to on. If not, then set the alarm point to off. Okay, so now that our main logic is ready, the last and final step is to save our current work and then go and set up our alarm routine. If you go to the top left corner, you will see a floppy disk. Go ahead and click on that to save your progress. Below the save button, you will see a main and alarm routine section. Currently, we've been working in the main routine section. So what we need to do now is switch over to the alarm section by clicking on the alarm text. Now that we are in the alarm routine, we will want to manually bring in an alarm block by going to the block library, which is located in the bottom left corner of the screen. In the search bar, go ahead and type in alarm to query up the alarm block, and then drag it into your workspace. This block will represent the actual alarm that gets thrown. So the first thing you want to do is link it up to the routine start, and then select your variable which is going to trigger the alarm. You can then go ahead and type in the title, instructions, and set a priority for the alarm. If you do not need a certain property, such as the cost, you can go ahead and click on the red X that appears when you hover over that property. Once you're ready, go ahead and click on the save button to save your program, and you're done. The program will go into effect immediately and begin throwing alarms. So to show you the results, if I go down to my VAV1, I can now see that an alarm was thrown due to the room temperature being over 80 degrees for more than 5 seconds. And if you recall from an earlier step, the program we created was running on not just one equipment, but it was actually running on multiple equipment that shared the same tags. So if you look at our campus graphic, you, we can see that an alarm was thrown in the JB Tower site as well. And if I dig in further, we can see exactly which VAV threw the alarm. So essentially, if your database is tagged correctly, all you have to do is create one single alarm program and you're done. Alright, so that's it for this demonstration on how to create a basic alarm using Finstack's Logic Builder application. We hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions regarding the details discussed throughout the video, please contact us at support at j2inn.com. Thanks for watching.